Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at discrete random variables. So we have a discrete random variable here defined by the probability density function here, probability of x equal to x, which is how we would sort of say, state the probability density function. This is discrete, is 2 over 3 to the power of x plus 1 for x equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all, all the way up to infinity. So find the moment generating function of x and obtain the expected value of x, uh, the expected value of x and the variance of x. Now, just as a quick remark, you might notice very quickly that if you're looking at that expression here, you might think that's actually quite tricky to work with and tr try and figure out. So what I can do here is re evaluate it for a couple of them, x equals zero, x equals one, and so on. And I find that I would get 2 over 3, 2 over 9, 2 over 27, 2 over 81, okay? So what I could do is re-express that as 2 thirds times 1 third, uh, 1 over 3 to the power of x. Very straightforward expression there, okay? That's not the only way I could express it, but just try and keep things as nice and simple as possible, okay? And so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, way of stating our probability density function there okay now the first question asks us to find the moment generating function and that's the calculation that we would use there this one here it's the expected value of e to the tx okay so in this case the expected value because we have a pdf or a, sorry discrete random variable this is very straightforward it's the sum to infinity of probability of x equal to x times e to the tx okay so it's a not too difficult to sort of set up okay this is just the the expectation of a discrete random variable that's all that is okay so let's begin so there we go so it is we could take out the two-thirds out to this in front of the summation Okay, just as it's treated as a constant. So what we have here is sigma of one third of x times e to the tx. Oh, e to the tx. So that can be simplified as follows. Now, to go any further, we have to make some assumptions. So what I'm going to have to do here is assume that what we have here is that the this expression here is less than one so it's a decreasing it's sequentially decreasing okay now the reason for that is it's just the only way I can really go forward so it's an assumption I have to make now so essentially using the laws of sequences and series we can express uh, the, this summation here as an infinite series where r is less than one okay as 1 over 1 minus e to the t over 3 okay and we have that two-thirds there so what I could do there is once I make that assumption this is just essentially moving on to the next line here is just tidying it up uh, simplifying it to multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 3 we have 2 divided by 3 to the minus e to the t for e to the t less than 3 okay and so that's it there. I, I'm just going to re-express it as follows. That's really the answer we're looking for. I have it expressed as followed here just because we're going to evaluate the mean and the variance next. So it's just to sort of make things as clear as possible when we try to proceed forward. Okay. So the next question is, that's essentially the answer to the first one there. The next question is to evaluate the mean and the variance so essentially what we do to evaluate the mean is we differentiate our moment generating function and evaluate it at t equal to zero okay and likewise for x squared the expected value of x squared this is what we would do just get the second derivative okay and that is equivalent to that and essentially, we using these two expressions there, we would be able to sort of determine the variance. That's really the game plan here for the rest of it. So evaluating the, uh, getting the derivative of this expression here, 
it's straightforward enough, but it's not that straightforward. Essentially, what I'm using there is the chain rule. Okay, so uh, so we have the derivative of three minus e to the t. So we do that first, and that the derivative of that becomes minus e to the t. And then the, just the derivative of the entire fraction there, okay, 2 times 3 to the minus e t to the minus 1. So that becomes, using standard differentiation, that's 2, which is a constant, times minus 1 times 3 to the minus e t to the power of minus 2, okay? So essentially what we're do, using there is the chain rule, okay? And this is one part of the chain, that's the fraction, and that is the component, this component here, okay? It's not that hard, it just might be a little bit hard to follow unless somebody makes it explicitly clear what's going on. So essentially what we do there is we end up with 2 times e to the t times 3 minus e to the t to the power of minus 2. I can, of course I can express that out further or re-express that as a fraction. But essentially, what I want to do is sort of keep it like that for the time being. Essentially, the reason is because we actually have to differentiate that again. And I want to sort of set it up in terms of the quotient rule. Okay, the, sorry, the product rule. Another uh, uh, straight, uh, straightforward thing from the rules of differentiation. This is the sort of the calculus you learn in school almost, okay? Product rule. So, product rule, quotient rule. So that sort of stuff there, and essentially what I have here is I'm going to assign e to the 2t as u, get the derivative of that, okay, which is e to the 2t, actually that's a, with respect to t. v is equal to 3 minus e t to the minus 2, and again we get this expression here, and again we're using the chain rule there again, okay, that's sort of very similar to what we've done the first time, okay, for to find the first derivative. Okay, so piecing it all together is a little bit of number crunching, but what you should get is a comp an expression with two parts there. Okay, uh, 4 times e to the 2t times 3 minus e to the t to the power of minus 3 plus 2 times e to the t times e to the minus, or 3 minus e to the t to the power of minus 2. A little bit cr awkward looking. But it works out, okay? Now, so we're nearly there. Essentially what we have to do is evaluate both the mean and the uh, that expression there and calculate the variance, okay? So the mean is very straightforward. Evaluate the expression that we got above, this one here. Just evaluate that at t equal to 0, okay? E, sorry, 2 times e to the 0, which is 2 times 1, times... 3 minus e to the 0, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. 3 minus 1 to the power of minus 2 is 2 to the power of minus 2, which is a quarter, essentially. So we end up with 2 over 4, 2 times 1 quarter, which is 2 over 4, which is 0 0.5. So that's the mean. That's the first part there. The second part is we have to find out the variance, and that involves calculating that there. Okay? So... There's two components to this. Uh, essentially, what we're going to do is just break it up into two parts. Okay, so it is three minus e to the sorry, just a sort of some sort of preliminary calculations. Three to the minus three minus e to the zero to the power of minus three. That's two to the power of minus three, which is one over eight, and likewise the minus two that is one over four. Okay, so what I'm doing here is we have when we evaluate this at t equal to zero. That's 1 over 8 and 1 over 4 there. So the 4 times e to the 0, that's 4, plus 2 times a quarter. Okay, so that actually also works out to be one. Uh, this, this, the, when we evaluate the second derivative at t equal to 0, that also works out to be 1 half. Okay, so that was straightforward enough. So that is... Sorry, one, not a half, it's one, okay? So the variance of x is essentially one minus variance of x 
is the expected value of x squared, which is 1, minus the expected value of the mean, sorry, the mean to be squared, which is 0 0.5 squared, which is gives us 0 0.75. Okay. That's it, really. So there's nothing really majorly difficult about this one. It's just being very careful about the differentiation rules and integration rules and stuff like that. The, the sort of building blocks of calculus. Okay. That's really all I did with that question. Okay. So that's great. We'll leave it there. Oh, also the, sorry, the sequences and series rule. That expression there. Okay. That assumption. All right.